This video describes basic idea about the design and construction of thermal energy storage tanks, which are used in district cooling plants. In this video, we will discuss briefly about TES tanks and peak load shaving method. Working of TES tank in district cooling system will be discussed with the help of a single line diagram. Then, we will discuss about design and construction of TES tanks. To have a better understanding, kindly refer to my previous video on district cooling system. The link is provided in the description. TES tank in district cooling system is used to store chilled water during off-peak time when electricity charges per kilowatt hour are lower, and to discharge through the chilled water network during peak time, when electricity charges per kilowatt hour are the highest. So that the electrical energy consumption by the chiller can be reduced during peak load time. This is called, peak load shaving. A general representation of the peak load shaving is provided in the next slide. Comparing the graph, we can see that peak load during the on-peak period is reduced. This is achieved with the use of TES tanks. Thus we can reduce the electrical load consumption during the on-peak periods and also, we can reduce the total number of chiller requirements. There are several types of TES tanks in the industry. In this presentation, we will discuss only about the most common type, which is stratified thermal energy storage tanks. The diagram shown represents the general process of a district cooling system. Detailed presentation is available in the video link provided in the video description. Now, let us discuss the use of the decoupler line and thermal energy storage tank. When the primary pump flow is greater than the secondary pump flow, that is, when the load requirement attains or load requirement goes down, the excess flow is bypassed through the decoupler line. Please note that, the decoupler line is also known as bypass line. In some countries, during the peak load, usually midday, the cost for electrical energy is higher. In such scenarios, thermal energy storage tanks will be implemented, for peak load shave-off. When the cooling load requirement is lower, generally during midnight, more chillers will be operated, and excess primary flow will be diverted through the decoupler line. The valve shown in the decoupler line, will be closed and the flow will be through the TES tank. Hence, cold water will be stored in the TES tank. This process is called as TES tank charging. The next day, during the peak load condition, the TES tank will be discharged, while switching off equivalent numbers of chillers. The picture below shows a TES tank. Storage of hot and cold water in the same tank, without any physical barrier, is achieved through the thermal stratification property. Their temperature difference causes, the colder and heavier water to settle at the bottom, while allowing the warmer and lighter water to float over the colder water. Thermocline is the transition line between warm and cold water. Fruit and Reynolds are the most important parameters in designing the diffuser slots, distribution system, and design flow rate. Now, let us go through the TES tank design process.
As the preliminary step, the cooling storage requirement in the ton-hour unit is estimated. The ton-hour unit for cooling storage is similar to the kilowatt-hour for the electrical power storage. It is estimated based on the cooling load requirement in the district cooling network for a predetermined period. Then, the per meter cube cooling storage capacity of water for the specified delta T of the chiller system will be calculated, which is equal to, density of the water multiplied by, specific heat capacity of the water multiplied by, delta T of the chiller system. Based on the above two values, the volume of the TES tank will be calculated, which is equal to, cooling storage requirement divided by, the per meter cube cooling load storage capacity of water. Accordingly, the height and diameter of the TES tank will be calculated from the volume, for which, location and floor area availability will be the other major determining factors. Diffuser slots and distribution systems are designed in such a way that the fruit number will be less than 0.5, to ensure the formation of the thin layer of the thermocline and thermal stratification. Flow rate is determined to keep Reynolds number less than 2000, to ensure limiting mixing action between the warm and cold layers. Proper insulation material and thickness shall be selected to keep the heat gain below the limited ambient temperature. Let us now discuss various steps in the construction of TES tank in general. A soil investigation study will be carried out to determine the type of piling and foundation requirement after taking the soil strata from the site. Municipality and other local authority approvals will have to be obtained based on the design drawings and site conditions. Excavation for foundation and piling will be done by machine excavators or manual excavation. Piling will be carried out after the excavation and necessary compaction. Steel mesh will be laid inside the formwork. Then, cement concrete will be poured inside. Reinforced concrete foundation will be ready after leaving it for curing for the required number of days. Once the RCC foundation is ready, anchor bolt grouting, bottom insulation, waterproofing, sand laying, bottom plates and annular plate installation will be done in sequence. Top layer shell plates will be erected and, vertical welding between plates will be carried out. Once the top layer is ready, roof plates will be laid over it with the steel framework and welding will be carried out. Once one layer is completed, it will be lifted using hydraulic jacks. The number of hydraulic jacks will be determined based on total weight of the shell plates and load bearing capacity of each hydraulic jack. Then, next layer of shell plates will be erected and vertical welding between shell plates will be carried out. After the vertical welding between plates in the same layer gets completed, horizontal welding between the adjacent shell layers will be done. This process will be repeated until the bottom layer of shell plates. Once all shell plate installations are completed, anchor chairs will be welded onto the bottommost layer and, the anchor bolts will be fastened over it. 
installation of diffuser pipes, vertical pipes, nozzles, control and instrumentation devices, drainage and overflow provisions, manholes, ladders, etc. shall progress in parallel with each layer of shell installation. Once all works are completed, insulation and cladding around the TES tank shells will be done. NDT inspections as per American Petroleum Institute or American Water Works Association or relevant internal codes shall progress in parallel with each layer of shell installation.